Hi guys, welcome back to my channel in Med. This is Supreeta. I'm a second year medical student in PGS Medical College, Bangalore. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about five things you need to know before your medical college starts. Now, this is a video that I had promised you guys that I'm going to post. That's the reason why I'm posting it because right now I'm in a very tight position. I have my final exams in March and my practical exams in April. So I thought I'll not be posting anything until April. But if I post this video, in April is going to be useless so <clears throat> yeah without further ado let's just get started tip number one is going to be decide which book you want to read from very early on now uh, if you have seen my previous video where I talked about the books that you'll need for first year MBBS you will realize that there are so many options available for each subject for example, just for physiology, there are two different cold standard textbooks, there are so many different reference books, and then there are Indian author textbooks. So it's going to be very confusing to you guys to choose one book. So what I want you guys to do is within the first two months of your medical college, at least one or two chapters is going to be done. So you go and check out these chapters in um, each of these books. Like you check one in your gold standard textbook and then come to your Indian, Indian author textbooks and see which textbook you are comfortable with and stick to that textbook. It is not necessary that you always choose a gold standard textbook. You can also read from an Indian author book. It's not about flexing that you're reading from a gold standard textbook. Because see, whatever knowledge was there in Guyton or Genong, without reading it, you can also gain it from your lectures. You can also gain it from other YouTube videos videos or other um, I don't know other sources like you look it up online or something like that it is not necessary that you always choose a gold standard textbook although I would encourage you to read it if you can't it's okay you can. the final point is that you choose a book that you are comfortable with and stick to it don't keep changing between books it's gonna be a disaster if you keep changing between books choose one book and stick to it even tip number two incorporate a study method into your routine now uh, i don't know most of you might already have a particular study method that you are comfortable with but uh, i when i first came into mbbs i did not have any study method as such uh, incorporated into my routine if you guys don't know what study methods I'm talking about, I'm basically talking about things like the Pomodoro technique or the Feynman technique or the active recall and space repetition. There are tons and tons of YouTube videos which talk about smart study techniques. You can go and look at those videos. But what I'm telling you guys is that try to incorporate a routine into your study life. Um, because to be very honest, most of MBBS is going to be memorization. If I'm being honest here, uh, there's not much to understand, but there are a lot of facts. For example, if you take anatomy, uh, you have various nerves, arteries, muscles. There is nothing to as such understand in them. You just have to remember it's a fact that it's an artery and this is going to be the course of the artery. It's a fact that this is a nerve and it's going to supply these muscles. You can't understand anything in it. You just have to remember stuff. Even so, two of the things that have greatly helped me in improving my memory is active recall and spaced repetition. If you guys don't know what active recall and spaced repetition is, I have already made a video uh, where I talk about uh, these study techniques and stuff. Not study techniques and stuff, but uh, more about how to study uh, for your exams or how to study in general. Go check out that video. Tip number three. Do not miss your dissections and practicals. I keep telling this in all of my videos and probably in the future also I will keep telling it and that is do not miss your dissections and practicals because first year is going to be the only year in which you're going to get an actual cadaver, actual human dead body with which you can learn from, okay? Unless you're taking MD or MS anatomy or something like that, this is the only year you'll be able to learn from a dead body. You will be given 
uh, the opportunity to dissect the body yourself so you have to take complete advantage of it because anatomy is a very volatile subject there is a lot of things to remember muscles arteries nerves you will keep getting confused which artery supplies what what is its course and stuff like that but if you have seen it in the cadaver if you have seen the course of the artery course of the nerve or if you have seen the muscles in an actual cadaver you are going to remember it for a very very long time and learning from dissect sections is the best type of learning that you can get for anatomy okay so don't ever miss your dissection classes and coming to practicals also medical is more about practicals rather than theory right so practicals are a very very important aspect of your study life and then it's going to help you understand things so much better when you do things practically so tip number 4 watch case studies or clinical case videos online now why i'm telling you guys this is that if you go to second or third year you will be taken into clinical rotation so you'll be actually seeing patients and you'll be able to see the symptoms and signs but when you're in first year there's not going to be much of clinical exposure you will not be taken into the hospital and stuff like that so it's going to be more of theory so the uh, you might not be able to understand so many things that's given in the textbook because for every given topic try to look up for cases or case videos on online or explanation videos uh, on youtube or um, any other platform that you can find because if you have a clinical uh, history or if you have clinical experience then understanding the things given in the textbook is going to become so much easier uh, for example in biochemistry you will be given a set of values like you have to remember serum uh, urea levels serum creatinine levels but if you just go keep on by hearting without understanding why you need to know about these things it's going to be useless but if you look at a clinical case study where there is some damage to the kidney if there is damage to the kidney the urea and creatinine is not going to get excreted from your kidney and that is the reason why your serum urea and creatinine levels will rise so that is the reason why you need to know the normal values of these things to know the abnormal values right so uh, if you come in a retrospective fashion you will be able to understand why you why you are supposed to know certain values or why you are supposed to know the things that is given in the textbook so and one more thing i want to squeeze in here is that uh, almost in every college there is going to be something called continuous medical education or continued medical education or something like that which are going to be uh, seminars where doctors from different places are going to come and there's going to be case discussions and stuff like that if you get the opportunity go and sit in these seminars a lot of people just you know uh, they think that they got an opportunity to bunk classes just because there's some seminar and they don't go to the seminars at all but go and sit in these seminars the amount of information and knowledge you'll gain from these seminars is amazing okay but um, probably in first year you will not be able to understand much but if you have attended a seminar then probably in second year or third year when you read something related to the topic then you will be like oh i had learned this in the seminar i already know this it's it's literally going to be like that so if you have the opportunity to go and sit in seminars definitely go because tip number 5 and my final tip for today is do group discussions now uh, when i say group discussions it does not mean you need to have 10 20 people in a group and start discussing and things like that in fact i would say that a maximum of 3 or 4 people in a group is enough for group discussions and group discussions are going to be of immense value but it is very important that the type of people you are doing the group discussion with are also interested in studying okay now most of the things that i am going to tell after this is probably going to be unsolicited advice but i am going to give it anyway and that is uh, be very careful rather than careful be very mindful of the type of friends you are making when you get into a medical college mm. i'm not saying that having uh, a uh, fun or partying and all is bad or something like that but there should be a balance between everything you need to have fun at the same time you also need to have friends who are interested in studying so the type of people you surround yourself with is going to define the type of person you will be becoming because they are going to your friends are going to be influencing the type of person you become and trust me you're going to change a lot within these 
five years. So be mindful of the friends you're making and um, don't, uh, you know, have this attitude of not sharing things especially when it comes to studies there are some people who know stuff and they don't share it with anybody else and then they're like oh if i tell it to her she might score more than me things like don't keep such things in mind okay because uh, always remember that if you share knowledge it's going to grow exponentially and many a times if you share uh, share it with your friends or discuss it with your friends you are going to probably uh, look at things with a different perspective maybe your friend thinks in a way you have never thought of before so you might end up learning something new from your friend so always try to do case discussions or group discussions and never ever shy away from asking something uh, you know if you have doubt in something it's better to um, you know realize that you don't know something and ask and learn it rather than not learn it at all because that is all for today guys uh, i know this is probably going to be an extremely short video and i could not include everything that i wanted to tell you guys but i did try and include the five most important things that i wish somebody had told me before my medical college started so yeah, I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If it was, please, uh, please let me know in the comment section below. Until next time. And that's going to be in March or April. So until next time. Bye. Take care.